Grids of pixels are fun and all, but they're not the only way to encode image information. In addition to bitmap sprites or raster sprites as they're sometimes known, which includes file formats such as JPEG and PNG, it's not just literal bitmap files. We also have vector graphics, and vector graphics are a somewhat different approach to storing image information. Instead of 2D grids of pixels, a vector image is going to be a series of points, lines, curves, and sometimes other shapes, which can then be used to construct an image using math. Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and welcome to Scalable Vector Graphics in GameMaker. So strictly speaking, GameMaker has had the ability to import SVG files for a while now, but as soon as you would import them into the IDE, they would be converted to bitmap sprites, just like everything else, so you couldn't really just draw them at runtime in vector format like that. But starting in the 2024.1300 GameMaker betas, yes really, we now have the ability to actually draw bitmap sprites during the game. Now, I've got a few test images of uh, varying levels of complexity, which I'm going to use to show this off. Uh, these all came from the, like, Wikipedia archive of test SVG images. I'll have that linked in the video description. Uh, there's quite a few of them. I just grabbed a couple that were at the top of the list. So there's this here map of Vietnam in some kind of Cyrillic script. I'm going to assume this is Russian. I don't know what it says because I don't read Russian. Uh, we've got this... Uh, taxonomical description of a red fox, and we've also got a, a second map. This is a, this appears to be the a, a metro map or a train map of uh, Stuttgart in Germany. I also don't speak German, although I'm going to take a wild guess that some of these names that say like tunnel in them just mean tunnel, because English and German aren't like that different from each other. Anyway. So I'm going to go over to Game Maker, and I'm going to go and create myself a sprite. Uh, let's go and call this SPR underscore test. And I'm going to click import, and uh, these images are stored in my, um, my, my downloads folder because I don't organize anything on my computer. Let's start with Vietnam. Uh, importing files to a sprite is not an undoable action. Yes, don't care. Uh, do you want to import this sprite as a vector? Um, this is admittedly not the most helpful message here. If you click yes, it's going to import it as the SVG. If, it, if you click no, it's going to rasterize it. And I'm going to actually do both uh, because I would like to uh, compare and contrast a little bit. So let's go and import that one a second time. Yes, and then no. You'll notice that these look a little bit different. Um, I'll get to some limitations of this soon. But first, let's actually talk about some of the, uh, the additional controls that you might see when you open a... Uh, a uh, vector sprite in Game Maker. So if you zoom in, you'll notice that instead of like seeing pixels as you would see if you zoomed in on a raster image, uh, you just see lines. And if I were to go and uh, let's zoom in on the raster image, especially around the coastline in this particular image or around some of the letters, uh, very pixels, no, uh, no, no polygons, no lines. And that is the uh, that is the main advantage of uh, vector images is that you can zoom in on them, you can zoom in and out, and you're not going to see any weird annoying pixel aliasing like this. Uh, this is not the same, by the way. About a year ago, Game Maker got the ability to render sign distance fields uh, for fonts, which allows you to scale in and out on fonts without any pixel aliasing. When you do that, the fonts are still encoded in a raster image format, but in addition to just like literally the shape of the characters, the font textures also store some additional information for how to like reconstruct the image, how to anti-alias the image. Uh, that's a different technology than what we're looking at here. Uh, what we're looking at here is something a little bit closer to vertex buffers uh, in Game Maker. If you're familiar with that, uh, we are actually triangulating the geometry in these images. And if you want to see that up close and personal, you can go to this little box over here in the corner next to the zoom controls and you can click solid wireframe or solid and wireframe and that's going to actually like draw the geometry. Uh, so that you can see where the actual like lines and, and whatnot are. Uh, this isn't a 100% perfect uh, SVG renderer by the way. So there are going to be features like I mentioned a little while ago that aren't, that are supported in uh, the SVG format itself aren't supported in Game Maker's implementation of it, uh, largely due to the way that Game Maker is going to triangulate everything and basically convert it into a vertex buffer. Anyway, this is a lot of fun. Uh, I'm going to zoom in on what I may or may not be the letter E, because again, I don't read Cyrillic characters, but it looks like an E. And uh, there's another 
a uh, bit of UI of relevance uh, when you import an SVG, a, a vector image into GameMaker. And that is the precision slider up here at the top. So this is going to control the uh, the density of the triangulation when GameMaker imports a uh, vector image. So if you drag it all the way up to the top 100%, you're going to see a lot smoother of approximations of curves like this. Uh, and if you drag it all the way down to the bottom, you're going to see a lot rougher of an approximation of curves like this. Um, the default is about 50%, and honestly, in most cases, that's fine. Unless you, like, really need to zoom in on, like, letters like this or that sort of thing. Uh, if you go to around the, uh, the coastline, uh, of, uh, of the country here, uh, you might notice a little bit more, uh, precision or a little bit less precision. Actually, that's, um, let me go back to, uh, to just solid without the wireframe. That's, uh... You know, these might actually all be straight lines and not have that many curves uh, inside that uh, inside that rendering. Anyway, some other things you might notice if you open up the texture settings, a lot of the options will be grayed out. You still can assign a uh, a vector sprite to a texture group, and it will, to a limited degree, uh, make use of the texture settings when relevant of the texture group. But like stuff that pertains to uh, bitmap image data, like tiling or, uh, pre-multiplying alpha, that sort of thing. That's, all those options are gone. Uh, collision mask, you can set the collision mask and whatnot to a vector sprite, the same way that you could to raster sprites, nothing there, as far as I know, has changed. And, uh, the nine slice options are gone, because nine slicing is literally basically chopping a sprite up into nine pieces so that you can tile, stretch, or repeat it in interesting ways. And uh, that that's not something that really makes sense to do with uh, with vector images, so that option is just gone. So when it comes to drawing uh, one of these, uh, you can use the same old draw sprite functions that you're probably used to. I'm going to use draw sprite stretched, and I'm going to say uh, spr test sum image zero. Uh, we're going to go from the origin of the room to mouse x mouse y, and that is going to allow me to stretch the image just. To wherever the mouse cursor is and we're gonna see that we can like we can mess around with the image without any like sprite pixel aliasing weirdness all right uh let me actually make this a little bit bigger um i mean the uh, the room so that it's it feels a little more of the screen my screen is i don't want it to be full screen because that messes with my recording sometimes but let's go with a uh, 1900 by 1000 and that's gonna allow me to stretch the image a little more all right Good fun. I, I would like, uh, for the sake of comparing and contrasting, let's say if keyboard check VK space else. So if you hit the space bar, I'm going to draw the raster version of the sprite. And if you hit the, if you don't hit the space bar, we're just going to draw the vector one. And uh, we can see that, again, the import is slightly different. But we're also seeing a lot more, uh, a lot more pixel aliasing, especially again around curved letters and around um, like the coastline. It's a lot fuzzier um, than the vector image. All right. So before I properly talk about the limitations, which I'm sure were just glaringly obvious in that last example when I was flipping between the two, uh, I'm going to also just talk briefly about something else that you can do with vector sprites that you can't do with raster sprites, and that is going to be anti-aliasing. Uh, let's call this SPR test 2 because I'm creative. And for this one, I'm going to import the uh, the Fox diagram because I found that the... Um... Yes, let's import that as vectors, please. I found that the uh, anti-aliasing is a little, a little bit more noticeable on this sprite than on the, uh, on the, on the maps. So... Uh, let's call this uh, SPR test 2 and uh, instead of doing all this with like drawing the raster version and whatnot, uh, I can say if keyboard check VK space, we can draw enable SVG A to anti-aliasing, draw enable SVG AA. Uh, this is going to take a true or false value whether or not you want to enable it. I'm going to enable that when you hit the space bar and disable it when you release the space bar. Uh, there's another function that goes with this, draw, uh, what is it off the top of my head, SVG, uh, draw set SVG AA level, and this is going to be a number between 0 and 1 for the anti-aliasing level, with 0 being basically none and 1 being maximum, and you can have any number in between. Uh, this is not the same, by the way, as, uh, what was it, display 
reset, which also allows you to set the anti-aliasing for Game Maker as a whole. Um, display reset anti-aliasing is going to be multi-sample anti-aliasing, which is basically a hardware feature, which I made a video about a couple months ago. It's kind of fallen out of favor in the modern day as an anti-aliasing solution, but it is there, and I do explain how it works in the other video. Um, I'm not actually sure what the anti-aliasing algorithm that Game Maker uses for, uh, for vector images like this is. But anyway, I can run the game and we can draw the fox picture, the fox pic, the fox picture. And you'll notice that when I hit the space bar, um, edges are going to be slightly smooth. Uh, you might notice it, especially in like, I'll zoom in a little bit on video, like the curvy splotches of color in the fox's fur. Uh, you'll notice that when I release the space bar, they get a little bit rougher, uh, around the edges of the fox's paws, for example. Uh, you might see some smoothing when I enable anti-aliasing. I don't really think it's something that most people are really going to notice, but if you do a lot of work with vector graphics, if your entire game is vector graphics based, you might want to enable this. Uh, if nothing else is something of a quality setting in your game's menu or something like that. But that is anti-aliasing. And I think we can, uh, we can, uh, close out of there. So now let's talk about the limitations. Um, if I import any of these sprites, and I guess while I'm here, SPR test three, and this one can be uh, Stuttgart. Um, if I import any of these sprites, you'll notice that they all look a little bit different from um, their, uh, their raster counterparts. Again, when GameMaker imports an SVG, it's going to take all of the line and curve data and just triangulate it. And it, uh, it doesn't contain, like, an actual text renderer, a vector text renderer. Uh, at least the runtime doesn't. Hey. And it won't triangulate the, uh, like, the shape of the text itself uh, when you import it. Uh, the reason that the text came in cleanly in, um, in the Vietnam map, by the way, is because uh, whoever made this image already did that for us. They took the text and converted it to, uh, like, converted it to vectors in... Adobe Illustrator or Inkscape or whatever they use for this. And uh, that's why Game Maker was able to like figure out what to do with this. And uh, that's also why I use this one, why I imported this one to show it off first before the other two. But at the same time, there does appear to be, however they uh, like handle the, like the geographic regions within the map. For whatever reason, the colors didn't come in correctly. And like our map here, just came in like as a solid white instead of as the actual colors that they were um, that they were originally designed in. But the, the letters were fine, again, uh, which is a little weird. I don't know if that's a bug in Game Maker's importer. I don't know if that's a feature that's missing that they're working on. I don't know if that's like a limitation that they're just not going to do. But uh, this is the sort of thing that you might want to be aware of. Uh, there are some other more advanced elements like uh, SVG allows you to define like somewhat more complicated effects using CSS and stuff. Uh, Game Maker doesn't support that, and I'm not really expecting it to. If you want to, in the Game Maker manual, uh, there is a, uh, on the page on non-bitmap sprites, which I'll also have linked in the description of the video, um, there's a list of limitations and other things that you might want to be aware of. Uh, let's see. So, if you want to, uh, if you want to try and, like, fix some of this yourself, um, if you click Edit Image, uh, for a vector sprite. Game Maker will inform you that no external editor path has been set for vector files. Um, Game Maker does actually allow you to define external editors for various assets, uh, sounds, and images, different types of images. And um, this is something that added a, a couple of years ago now, but I don't really think, at least for regular uh, bitmap sprites, it was ever like fully fleshed out, but that might be a rant for another day. Um, I'm going to go to SVG files. I'm going to uh, search my computer. Where is Inkscape installed to? Um, I think that's going to be program files. I Inkscape and uh, uh, where is the executable for this actually stored? Uh, Inkscape.exe. Let's select this one. No, not not Python. Uh, Inkscape. We're going to select that one. And with, uh, with an external editor defined for uh, SVG files, I can go click Edit Image, and that is going to open up Inkscape, and it's going to allow me to actually edit the SVG file. Uh, you'll notice that this is the original SVG file. It's not the weird hacked-off version that Game Maker gave us. And if I wanted to, I could uh, select, zoom in on, uh, for example, this text element. Can I select the text element? Thank you. Uh, this is actual text. I could, if I wanted to, like... Um, 
I, c I could edit this text like that. I'm going to undo that because I don't think that's the what the scientific name for the red fox is. And uh, let's see. I should be able to say uh, go to path, object to path, and that is going to convert the text uh, to an actual like series of uh, lines and curves. Um, and that is going to allow me to uh, save that, close the editor, and now when I go back to Game Maker, we can see that we actually have the text because it's now it's no longer just an actual text element. Uh, it is now like triangulated. Uh, let's go to the uh, to the wireframe view. We can see the the wireframes. Uh, we can increase or decrease the precision in in the curves like this. Uh, and now everyone's happy. And if I wanted to, I could do that for all the other text elements too. Um, can I like can I select multiple uh, multiple objects at once in in Inkscape and like do them all at the same time? I don't feel like doing that right now. You get the idea. All right, so that's SVG. Uh, you might have noticed when I was going through like the uh, the preferences window for external editors and whatnot. Uh, what was it in general paths? Um, you might have noticed an editor for Swift files and also Spine files. So Swift is Shockwave Flash. I'm not gonna set anything for that. Uh, this is Adobe Flash. Um, this is something that game makers actually had the ability to work with for a while now. I want to say it goes back to GMS1, but uh, Shockwave Flash, not many people use Adobe Flash or Adobe Animate or whatever they renamed it to uh, in the modern day. And I've kind of never really bothered to make a video on it because I don't really think... Basically, every like everything that you can do with Swift files, you can now do with SVG files. So this video... If you understood this video, you also understand how to deal with Swift files in Game Maker. Spiders for skeletal animation. That's uh, somewhat different from dealing with uh, vector graphics like we're doing here. I probably will talk about uh, spine and how you can use it in Game Maker eventually because there is actually rather a lot to it. But I don't know. It's always been a fairly niche way to do animation in Game Maker, and it's always kind of been a low priority for me. Maybe later. Um, is there anything else? I think that's it. So, uh, this will be out of beta and into the regular version of Game Maker starting in 2024.13. And I guess since this is now coming up on the horizon, it should also, I'm assuming, be in uh, the LTS version for 2025. I'm gonna end this off here. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I like to post videos on weird stuff you can do in Game Maker, so if any of this appeals to you, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. You should all go check out Wizard X and the Lost Hat, which is one of the games that I like to work on when I'm not doing YouTube stuff. Link to the Steam page can be found down below. I hope you all found this useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Square Crow, Spy Die Games, Manta Ray, Ganymede Ghost, Game Maker, Edward Holt, and DJ Gibbles for supporting these videos. If you'd like to join their ranks, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.